A very warm welcome to all of you. Today I'm going to deliver the presentation uh, on my research entitled as performance of nickel catalyst supported on alumina magnesia for dry reforming of methane effect of preparation groups. I am Muhammad Yusuf, the presenting author for this research and Dr. Bawadi Abdullah is the corresponding author and my supervisor. So here we start. My presentation is divided under the following headings, that is introduction, methodology, experimental, results and discussion, and finally the conclusion. Coming to the introduction, we already know that energy generated from fossil fuels still constitutes the highest percentage of world energy generations and global warming is on the rise. So there is a need to fix these uh, greenhouse gases uh, since they are increasing the global warming. And in the figure one, we can see that 65% of the carbon dioxide is released by the fossil fuel and industrial processes, whereas 11% from forestry and other land uses. And in these greenhouse gases, 16% of methane is also emitted, but this is also a very important factor since methane is 28 times more potent than the carbon dioxide when it comes to the greenhouse effect. In the figure B, we can see the production of natural gas by top 20, countries of the world and we can see that Malaysia lies uh, at the 13th position in the top 20 countries. We can also see the rising trend of the carbon dioxide from 315 ppm to 415 ppm in the last, last six decades and a similar trend for the methane that is from 1650 ppb to around 1850 ppb in the last four decades. Therefore, there is a need to fix these greenhouse gases in order to uh, in order to avoid their rise in the atmosphere and uh, avoid the global warming. So gas reforming has always been a promising approach for converting these greenhouse gases into syngas. So here I will be discussing about the dry reforming of methane uh, to convert greenhouse gases into syngas uh, which can be used uh, by fissure trop synthesis for the synthesis of synthetic fuels and other value added chemicals. So dry reforming is the most favorable process because it utilizes two main greenhouse gases that is CO2 and CH4 to produce a value added products that is syngas. These are the main uh, materials which have been used to synthesize the catalyst, the hexahydrate salt of nickel, magnesium and aluminium and ammonia solution as a precipitating agent. So uh, for the methodology one to prepare the catalyst A, we used a single step technique in which we mixed all the stoichiometric amount of salt for nickel, aluminum and magnesium in dissolving it in water and then added dropwise ammonia solution to, uh, for the precipitation and we maintained a, uh, a pH of 9 throughout the reaction of, of 12 hours and then we filtered and washed our precipitate. We then put it in the oven for drying for 12 hours at 110 degrees Celsius. And finally, the calcination of the catalyst is done for five hours at 850 degrees Celsius. For the methodology, uh, second, we prepare catalyst B, uh, that is by co-precipitation followed by impregnation. So here we prepare the catalyst support, that is aluminate magnesia by a similar methodology I discussed previously. And uh, further, we add the nick in the second step, we add nickel nitrate salt to the prepared uh, catalyst support, and we do the same procedure mm -hmm. again uh, and to prepare the catalyst B. This is the experimental setup which has been used uh, that is, the gas feeding section, the reactor section, and the analysis section that is, the GC section. So in the results and discussion, we can see uh, the different peaks for hydrogen, carbon, monoxide, nitrogen, methane, and CO2 in the exit stream for both catalyst A and B, which confirms the existence or the occurrence of the dry reforming reaction. We uh, generally take the, uh, for this, uh, the reactor which we used, we take 100 milligram of the catalyst and then we did the dry reforming of reaction for six hours and we weighed the uh, final catalyst and we can see that 75 gram milligram of uh, coke has been formed for catalyst A that is for the single step uh, synthesis catalyst and uh, only 10 milligram of uh, coke has been formed for catalyst B that is prepared by co-precipitation followed by impregnation. 
uh, we also did the uh, surface area analysis. Uh, we can see that for the support, the surface area is 96.1 meter square per gram, which got decreased to 39.6 after the uh, impregnation of the catalyst, uh, which is still higher than the uh, single steps uh, synthesized catalyst that is 25.1 milli meter square per gram. We can also see the uh, average crystal size uh, for catalyst A, which is bigger, 55.7 nanometer, and for catalyst B, which is 40.6, which has been determined by debye Scherer equation from the XRD data. In the XRD results, we can see the different uh, crystals formed, that is MgO, uh, NiAl2O4, uh, oxides of alumina and magnesia, and a graphitic carbon sharp peak has been obtained for catalyst A, in which the 75 gram of uh, carbon has milligram of carbon has been shown, and th these results are found consistent with the literature. Finally, we did the performance evaluation, and we can see that catalyst B always showed the elevated and superior performance when compared to catalyst A, both for conversion of CH4 and CO2, and also you know, for the uh, syngas ratio that is H2 to CO ratio. Coming finally to the conclusion, we can see that the synthesis and performance evaluation testing of 10 weight percent nickel supported on alumina magnesia with alumina and magnesia ratio 1 is to 2, uh, which is best as seen from the literature, has been prepared by one step that is co-precipitation and two step synthesis uh, techniques. The catalyst synthesized by two step method that is co-precipitation followed by impregnation showed superior result for dry reforming reaction both in terms of activity, co-formation, stability, surface area, and conversion of methane and carbon dioxide. This is because in one step, most of the active metal sites gets encapsulated in alumina magnesia lattice structure and some amount of nickel combines with magnesium to form MgNiO4, which is very stable and it does not get reduced even at 800 degrees Celsius during activation of catalyst. Finally, we can see that the two-step synthesis methodology is better than when compared to one step synthesis technique. These are the references which I used. Thank you.